Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the second video in this series of videos about the research process, a beginner's guide. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to find relevant research papers and how to identify the gap in literature. So to start off, what is a gap in literature? What does that mean? Well, a gap in literature is a part of the research whereby we don't understand what is happening. It's a part of research that is undefined and it's a part of research that should be defined in order to help you identify what it is that you are looking at when you go into your studies. So in today's video, I'm going to be summarizing the three steps that you want to take when trying to identify your gap in literature and when trying to kind of focus down into that specific topic that you are going to be looking at for your dissertation and for your research. So this video is kindly sponsored by Our Discovery, which is a free AI powered app for researchers and students that provides you with recommendations that are tailored to your research interest. Our discovery allows you to boost your productivity with research reading, find and discover new papers, read on the go, and never miss out on research within your desired field. So what is the purpose of a research problem? There are three main points. The first is to introduce the reader to the topic that is being studied and to kind of, I guess, show what it is that we are actually going to be discussing within this research. The second is to contextualize the problem and to define the parameters. So what is it that you are actually going to be looking at? This would be within the research problem. And the third is to provide a framework for your research. So someone who only sees your problem will know sort of what is going to be required for you to use in terms of your methodology to be able to research and conduct the study. It's almost crucial to have a research statement, a problem statement or gap in literature. It's always, without that, there is no research essentially. What is it that you are looking at? would be unknown. So it's a crucial, crucial part that you need to determine before you can even consider the methodology and, and sort of moving on to writing your research statements. So first step, step number one is to read around your topic. So in order to be able to identify a research problem, you need to know what is out there. You need to be aware of the literature. You need to be aware of what has been published. You need to be aware of what we already know. What do researchers already know about, about your topic? And to be able to do this, you need to be actively reading all the time. You need to be building reading habits and actively saving papers and bookmarking and keeping a tab of everything within one platform. So as I mentioned earlier, this is where our discovery comes in. And as I mentioned, they are kindly sponsoring this video. It's a free to use AI powered app, which is really cool as it allows you to tailor your recommendations and tailor the topics that you are interested in. And it frequently provides you with suggestions for research to read, allows you to bookmark and so many so many so many cool things within the app i think for me the most important feature is that it allows you to build healthy reading habits and allows you to build regular reading habits so that when you are thinking about your research and you are thinking about what the problem is and what the problem statement is it means that you are well read and, and our discovery really helps with this. So let me quickly show you a few of my favorite features of this app and I'm gonna put it over here on my screen as I go through on my phone. First of all, my first impressions when I discovered this app was how easy it is to use and how user friendly it is. And that is always my first pain point when it comes to reading research. I want it to be accessible and I want it to be easy. And the app, this app as you can see here on the side, is super, super clear, very easy to look at um, and summarizes your research quite nicely. Our discovery have the, one of the largest collections of open access papers, over 24 million papers, which means that when you're reading and you're setting your recommendations, you are sure that you won't miss out on any new literature that's been published recently, and you'll just be able to find all, everything's concise, everything's within this one platform. And actually, as I was scrolling, I configured my feed and I set the topics I was interested in, I found so many new papers that are really relevant to my research that I actually had hadn't seen before and I found one that was just published a couple days before I was looking at this so that was really interesting as I it hadn't popped up on you know anywhere else and it was really cool that it popped up here so when you sign up you will set the topics that you are interested in so for me I set topics um, that are actin cortex of cells cortical actin filaments cortical actin actin side skeleton these are topics that are relevant to my research and so I want anything that is recommended to me to be relevant to those and scrolling down 
these are all super interesting papers that I've mostly read actually but um, uh, quite a few of them are new to me as well um, so that's also really good and the nice thing about our discovery is that you can sign up to get notifications so every day you can get a reminder for reading so again like I said you're building that habit where you're making sure that you're scrolling you're constantly looking you're constantly being reminded to kind of immerse yourself within research so that's a huge plus so as I'm scrolling down I can come across a paper that I'm interested in I, I feel like sounds like it could be relevant and um, so I click on it and I actually can bookmark uh, using this platform so you can bookmark it and what that does is it creates a bookmark and then you can view those bookmarks in your library in the saved bookmark tab um, and so you're able to you know if you're just quickly reading or you're trying to build a habit of reading at least you can kind of bookmark those papers to come back and read later or to you know just to be aware that actually these are papers that you think could be relevant to you the app is available both on the apple store and the play store for androids or apple users and it's also available on the web so you can you know if you're using if i'm you know reading on the train on my way to the lab and i decide to bookmark and you know kind of take note of some things i can then go to the go to uni, open my laptop and start reading and kind of everything is in sync. So that's, it's quite smooth and I, I absolutely love that. And it's an absolute must for me when I'm reading on one device and then transferring to another device. It just has to be a smooth <laughs> process. There's another really cool feature that our discovery have called Amplify. So if you go to the search tab like this, you can see that you can amplify your research by exploring new topics. So these are topics that are sort of aligned, so closely aligned to your specific research topics. And it again, when you're trying to find a research problem, what you want to do is you want to ensure that you're reading not only directly within your topic, but also kind of broadly around it. So you understand the I guess what's going on within your field, not just specifically in that topic, but also a bit more broadly. So it allows you to have a better understanding of what's what we understand as researchers. So what I could do is I could say, right, um, actin network, that's definitely interesting um, and would be, I think would be relevant for me to read. So I can go there and I can add this topic to my feed. And what that does is it personalizes my feed and it means that the recommendations that I get will include this topic. So again, just strengthening your knowledge, strengthening what you are reading on a daily basis and kind of building those habits. In the past, I've spoken a lot about how as researchers, we don't have a lot of time to spend reading every single paper that we come across. And so another really useful feature that our discovery have is a feature called Smart Summaries. And this is powered by Scholarcy. So now I'm using the desktop version. And again, you can see that I'm scrolling down and I've got my personalized reading feed and this is a paper that I'm interested in reading it was published last year quite relevant to my research and you can see that it says over here key highlights available for this paper so when I go read now what it does is it allows me to see a short summary of the paper um, and you've got the highlights over here so a few bullet points and you've got the highlights over here so a few bullet points summarizing it you then have the full paper but a summary of the introduction a summary of the results and a summary of the conclusion so you're able to only focus on papers that are actually relevant to your research you can also integrate your favorite referencing tool and um, so it can generate citations for you so overall you're just saving time and effort when it comes to reading research and adapting that to your actual studies as you can see from all of the features that i've just showed you which is not everything by the way there's so many more cool features um, our discovery is an app that you have to try it's such a such a useful tool which i feel like as a student as a researcher as a postdoc it just will really help boost your reading help build your habits and help um, tailor what it is that you're reading for your own research i'll leave a link to download the app our discovery in my description bar down below and also as a comment at the top of my comments box let me know if you do try it let me know how you find it um, and thank you again to our discovery for sponsoring this part of the video so the second step now that you've done your reading and you are very well read thanks to our discovery you can now formulate your research problem and so step two is formulating this problem there are three main features of a research problem the first is it being very specific so you have clear objectives what is it exactly that you are going to be doing what is the exact specifics 
of your research that you are looking at. Make it clear and unambiguous. The second is that it explores the nature of your research problem. So yes, we have a topic, but what is it about that topic that you are doing? And we'll look at some examples in a second. And the third is to determine variable relationships. So within your statement, within your research problem statement, you want to have said what is the relationship and what are the variables that you're looking at. So that should be very clear within your statement. So let's take a look at one example that I found and I thought was really, really interesting. So a bad statement or a not good statement would be something like, how are school systems addressing childhood obesity? Right, so we're looking at education. How are school systems addressing childhood obesity? So, okay, fine, we look at, we're looking at schools, we're looking at obesity, but I don't, like, what are we looking at specifically? What group, what age, what kind of intervention, what kind of range of time? There's no detail here, and it could be open for interpretation, and it also makes it really hard for you as a researcher to hone in what it is that you're looking at if your research problem statement isn't well-defined. And a better statement would be, and I've written it down, so I'm gonna read off, is what are the effects of intervention programs in elementary schools on the rate of childhood obesity amongst year three to year six students so can you see the difference there the first one just says how are school systems addressing obesity okay the second one says how are interventions so that could be like after school clubs that could be breakfast clubs that could be to do with food to do with education it, intervention so things that are specifically put into place and then elementary schools so that's also like that could be primary school or, or junior school but the, you know, that is the age range and then the rate of childhood obesity so we're looking at the rate the other question statement all it said was childhood obesity now we're saying we're looking at the rate of childhood obesity so like how quickly is it occurring kind of I guess what the, what is the percentage of childhood obesity within that group and then we've, we've defined the range of the age so we, we're not just saying anyone in elementary school, anyone in primary school, we're saying specifically between year three and year six. So we're making that definition. We could even go even deeper and say girls only, boys only, a certain racial group. So many different aspects of this can get even, even more clear. And the more clear that your statement is, the better it is for yourself as a researcher, but also for those that are reading your paper to understand and to, to know what to expect when they're looking at your results and your methods. So look at your research statement. If you've written one already, take a look at it and ask yourself, have I defined what my variables are? Have I defined who it is I'm targeting? Have I defined the age range, the time range, the specific um, variable that I'm looking at? Are these things all defined or is it just a general problem statement? Have a little think about that. And the last step, but definitely not the least step, is to revise your problem statement. So now that we have one, we've done the reading, we've written a problem statement, we now need to look over it because most likely and a lot of the work that I've done with students it never sticks when you just have the first one like you need to kind of revise it two or three times or even more to get to a statement that you feel happy with and that truly describes what it is that you're looking for so a few issues may arise and just to be aware of them because you can try to target these issues before the first issue could be that it's too broad so your supervisor um, may come back and say it's a good statement but it's a bit too broad try to narrow it down a little bit so again think about that when you're actually writing your statement the second thing could be that you have a misunderstanding of the topic so if your statement includes some information that is actually actually incorrect that could be something that pops up so this could be something that you have to think about when you're reading try to understand the topic as much as possible so you're not having this issue and then the flip side would be that maybe your statement is too narrow like you're looking at such a small group or such a small sample group that actually it isn't worthwhile doing that research so it shouldn't be too broad but it also shouldn't be too narrow and then the last issue could be comments on its clarity so how clear is your statement more to do with the English to do with the phrasing itself have you written in a way that actually makes sense or have you just tried to cram in the information within you know 20 words try to read it out loud read it to someone around you try to make sure that it actually makes sense <laughs> and when it's being read so I hope that was useful I hope that you found this video was useful to be able to find and, and to be able to help you identify your research problem and your gap in literature and your research statement, always, always start off. Your first step should always be reading research papers, building up those habits, and then you want to find and actually try to compose that research statement 
with and then you want to revise the statement do let me know if you do end up using our discovery i would highly recommend it as i mentioned earlier um, and i would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on it and if you find it useful and you're going to try to i don't know adapt it within your daily routine daily reading routine i'd love to hear more from you and also let me know if you've written a research statement feel free to jot it down below and i'll quickly give you a summary as to whether i think it's a good statement or not I hope that you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you in my next one. Don't forget to leave me a comment, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video with your loved ones and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!